now call to order the April 20, 2020 meeting of the New Caney Independent School District Board of Trustees at 6.05. Let the minutes show that the form is present with all members in attendance. Please rise for the invocation to be given by Mr. Mixon and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and honor the Texas flag to be given by Mr. Warwick. Who was it? 
that's giving you this allegation, uh, when was it given? A description of the allegation. Any written documentation, emails, letters, signed letters, something, nothing was provided for her. Simply words. Since Kate Patterson was not available to help Deborah, Deborah asked Ms. Schaffner, can I come to you for help? No was the answer. She was too busy. She has too many people to supervise. She suggested to go to other districts to find out how they would handle this issue. Interesting comment. On March 3rd, the, the meeting ended. Deborah thought, you know, okay, she will take that into consideration. She agreed that, yeah, she will. She had a meeting on herself with her staff on March 13th. One of the slides for her presentation was exactly what was told to her that she needed to make sure that the staff was going to support the campuses, and she did that in that meeting. After the meeting on March 13th, another meeting was called with Ms. Schaffner. Two accusations were presented to her at that time. One, that Deborah gave the wrong advice about an MDR. She asked about the details again. Deborah has in the district maybe two to three hundred of these MDR. So when you say to her, hey, you gave wrong advice about an MDR. Well, what MDR? What was the child's name? What was the date? What was the school? Give me some information. No information. Okay. That was the first accusation. Second accusation, incorrectly advising a diagnostician to recommend tier two um, or tier two RTI as opposed to special education evaluation. Something Deborah would never do. She's been thoroughly trained on this. Um, most recently by your own attorney, Paul Wilson. Totally just not a true statement. 30 seconds. Pardon me? You got 30 seconds. All right. I need your help in filling in the gaps here. It just doesn't make sense. Where's the documentation? I could accuse anyone about anything. And they would say, well, where's it? Well, you just have to trust me. It's true. I'm telling you the truth. Show me the documentation. That's all I'm asking for. And I hope that you would take this into consideration and you yourself would conduct a thorough investigation of this regarding these allegations. So you can be convinced that they are not false and just made up before you vote on her demotion. And I thank you so much for your time. And it's an honor to be here. And I guess that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate you coming to the Thank you, sir. Item three on the agenda is closed meeting. The board will now meet in closed meeting under authority of Texas Code, Government Code 551.074 for the purpose of personal matter, Government Code 551.071 and or 551.129 for attorney presentation, Government Code 551.072 for deliberation regarding the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, and Government Code 551.0821 to deliberate the matter regarding a public, public school student wherein personally identified information will be necessarily revealed uh, by the deliberation. Any action as a result of closed session discussion would take place after the board reconvenes an open meeting. The current time is 614. The board now ends the closed meeting at 657. We're now convening an open session. Item four of the agenda is superintendent's report. Starting off, number one, Mr. Calvert. Yes, sir. It's going to give you all an update on a couple of areas tonight. Uh, uh, construction update, high school number three. Uh, we have open bids on April 7th. We got six bids for that project. Uh, good news is all those bids were under our initial estimate, so we're in great shape going through those bidders. Uh, Richard and I talked. He wants to award a, it's called basically an intent to award letter. But what that does is it lets the general negotiate with sub better and really nail down that price and give us a good idea. Uh, he wants to do that with Gamma Construction. Uh, you're sitting in one of their projects right now. 
Um, so that just makes it where he can nail down that price better. If something happens, we're confident in the person that's right behind that. So uh, got some good things going on high school three. Woodridge Forest, uh, we are down to the just finite things to do. Get some countertops put on at the science lab, the special material, and then they're working on the fire alarm, the radio boosting system for that field house. So Woodridge is uh, in the punch list today, so it's looking good. Uh, Keeper Crossing, a lot of dirt work going on. Majority of the site utilities, paving, earthwork, uh, grading of the site is done. Uh, still working on the slab, and for too much longer, you may even, I will be up today. I've been out there a couple days to check, so the steel's going to start going up. So we're looking good on all three of those projects. Uh, brief update on Education Foundation. Uh, we did meet with their officers on March 10th just to kind of show them the new vision and direction of the foundation. I'm talking about going with employee scholarships, that sort of thing, laying out some new bylaws that, that frame it, make it uh, more sort of service oriented towards the district, as far as that thing goes. We also talked about uh, Ashley Walker Drill. She was the new hire that's helping train with that, and basically what she's going to do for the foundation. Uh, so we're working on getting a meeting together, whether it's a format like this or virtual, with their entire board, hopefully by the middle of May, to get all this going. Uh, obviously, some curveballs have been thrown at us as far as fundraisers, events, things of that nature. Uh, but we're going to start working towards hopefully awarding those first round of employee scholarships for the fall semester. Uh, Trina has been working with a group of people going to St. Houston as well as North Star Kingwood, and essentially they're just waiting on a check. They've got all the boxes checked, they're just waiting on the money to do that. Uh, so those things are teed up, ready to go, we're just finalizing some things there. Anything on those two areas? Shoffner, you're up to bat. <coughs> okay, um, I get to share an update with you on our instructional continuity plan. Um, I want to say first that I'm really proud of our teachers, our principals, our parents, and our students. This has been quite a shift um, in our instructional model, and um, everyone has done a, such a great job of being flexible and positive. Um, and I have a lot of positive to share tonight. But on your desk, I left you a packet that looks like it has a bunch of charts on it. That is all campus data. Remember uh, at our last board meeting, I told you that we could pull campus data to see um, which, did, which students were accessing campus, how long they were spending on campus, and what subjects they were coming in. So that is our first attempt um, at pulling all of that information. Um, as of March 31st. And so as of March 31st, we had 77% um, of our elementary students who were participating um, in campus with their teachers and online. And for secondary, um, as you can see, it's about 95%. Um, our middle schools are doing an amazing job. And um, for secondary, it's divided by subjects because um, a lot of our kids are accessing English and math. They're not necessarily science and social studies, so we want to keep a uh, close eye on that. So we don't want that to pop in the gap. So anyway, um, also, so you can look at that in your, uh, in your convenience. I also have shared with you two pieces of paper uh, that have the elementary and secondary um, proposed grading policy. Um, they are very simple. And basically what they both say is for secondary, um, if you choose to do the assignments, those assignments can only help your grade, not hurt it. So uh, the fourth and nine weeks will not count towards GPA. But for some of our students who are not passing either at the semester or for the third nine weeks, we want to give them an opportunity to improve. And so that was really um, our motivation for making sure that they had that opportunity. Um, and, and for elementary students, we're really gathering information with the assignments that they submit about um, their understanding of the T's and their mastery level so that we know that they're ready to go to the next grade right level. Um, there's been a lot of support for teachers at elementary um, every Friday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Anyway, on Fridays, every hour, <laughs> our um, specialists are working with a different group of teachers. So at 8 o'clock, it's pre-K, 9 o'clock, is kinder, 10 o'clock, is first grade, all day long. 
And I've been able to sit in on those Zooms, and we have about 95 to 100 teachers every Friday that for an hour talking about their students, looking at the Canvas plans, I'm talking about some amazing ways that they are encouraging their students to participate. We have one teacher who on Wednesdays um, has a breakfast club with her kids, and she reads a different book every week, and every, all the kids eat their cereal or whatever they're eating for breakfast, and they all eat together. And so there have been some really good ideas. Um, we've had guest readers um, that have been um, recording themselves reading the book, and then we push it out for all the courses. Um, and so we are, I feel like our district is doing an amazing job at connecting with our kids and making sure that our kids still feel that connection with us. We also, for students who haven't um, accessed Canvas yet, teachers are working really hard this week to follow up with those kids to find out what they need, um, remind them how they can get a Chromebook, um, and where we have free Wi-Fi access for those kids. Um, we also have paper um, activities that are going home um, through our, both of our meeting sites um, for both elementary and secondary. So, do y'all have questions for me? Yes. So you mentioned on here that um, students, the fourth nine weeks grades, can only raise their averages and, and GPA, not lower. But then it says grades in the fourth nine weeks will not affect your GPA at all. What is what except, is to raise, like? except to raise it. So if you're looking at a semester average, that's where it's going to come into play. It'll raise the semester average instead of us just copying the same score. Okay. So if there are, uh, how, how are they going to be able to do that if they're not grading things, if they're not counting grades? So we are, uh, we do have assignments in Canvas that kids are working on and they're submitting just as evidence that they're working. They're just not getting an actual grade on it. For those students who want to increase their grade, we're going to use that. Those grades and that evidence as proof that they've completed their assignments and mastered their courses to raise that grade. Does that make sense? Will the raise their GPA also? If they, if they, no, not for seniors. Fourth nine weeks does not count for seniors. Well, most of the seniors don't have to do nothing the rest of the year. They can bring that computer back down and tell you we ain't doing nothing else. We are using Canvas in our contacts with kids to make sure that they are um, mastering the teams and continuing to work. Um, but our policy is, even before um, COVID-19, is that third nine weeks but the bad part about this, almost all of them seniors know that this is in effect. That's why I'm not going to work. That's a shame. And that's a shame that it's out there that we can't do something for them. Well, they raise their GPA if they want to do the work. The ones that don't, then that's, that's their problem. But it was already that way for seniors prior to COVID. They already locked in their rank. They had already locked it in. And the rank didn't change. Yeah. Whether it's COVID-19 or not, yeah. their rank does not change after certain weeks for any for any of the kids. And we do have a really high percentage of kids that are logging into Canvas, as you can see on here. It's in the 90s. So um, I know it seems like kids are not logging in, but, it, but the data is showing otherwise. So. How is this affecting our special ed services? Are you able to provide that? That's a great question. Okay, so. Um, for dyslexia and for special ed, um, those kids work in groups, and because of FERPA and privacy laws, we have difficulty with that because teachers only really have time in their day to make sure that they, uh, that they work in groups. And so we have a laser fish form um, that we've worked on for special ed and for our dyslexic um, students uh, where their parents can grant permission for them to work with the group of kids. And so um, our first day for dyslexia groups was today. Um, and we had, we've already had in the first day 30% of them have already returned their permission form from their parent to participate in a group. Special ed, uh, it, we're about the same spot. So, but we're starting for those parents who have already created permission, those groups started today. Well, they have to be like over the summer or in the fall. So we're already doing that. We're, um, we already have been scheduling ARDS and ARDS have been meeting to make adjustments. Um, one thing that's a little bit of a misunderstanding is that, uh, that we have to, uh, in the summer, make up for every single minute that was missed. And 
really what we'll do is we'll look at students who regressed or that didn't make progress, and we'll tailor a plan to make sure that we meet those needs. So kids that progress well and do well with less time that's more made individualized, we'll have to make every single, single one of those minutes up. But yeah, we will have these slide this summer for those students. Yeah. Um, regarding the Wi-Fi, were we able to get an update? They were. I haven't checked on it lately. Uh, we have, uh, there's a lot of places where the coverage is not there. Uh, main area, the hot spots that we were looking that really needed coverage in our district that you can't even get cell phone coverage at that house in that area. Um, that, that's a limitation. Uh, we really stuck to covering what we call park and learn, covering the parking lot. So we tried to geographically cover the entire district and put it at the farthest north, the farthest south, the farthest locations and even some sporadic spots in between. But I'm I'll look into that that's what you're like. Oh it sounds like the other I just And they're using it. I, I was okay, out at Garwood on a Sunday night and there was twelve people in the parking lot at like seven PM. We did expand those hours. We we were stopping at what time? Seven, before seven, we were stopping at four or five, and after that, but we extended to seven. Okay. That's 12 hours a day. So, concerning um, passing and failing of the seniors, how many kids are affected by that? You're going to have to do like a case by case basis. Is that kind of, is there, is this just pretty minute number, I'm assuming? Not it's, a very it's going to be a small number, but our counselors, that's what they've been focusing on first, is, is taking care of it connecting with every Good. senior that's in danger of maybe not graduating. Okay. And so that's really their priority right now. Perfect. So. We've reached, a, I see we have a report like for zero activity, like with, I guess, in their big canvas, but zero activity in core areas. Do we know those specific students? Is there like a reach out to these kids and find out why they're not accessing? So that's what the teachers are working on this week. They've been working on it, but they're attempting to contact those kids again. We already have lists of exactly the names of those students and, and the attempts that we've made. Um, and we're letting them know where they can go and get a Chromebook and where the Wi-Fi areas are at the end. Um, but yes, we didn't know who those students are specifically. And that's why we divided the responsibility by classroom teacher, because if I have 21 kids, 22 kids, I know those kids well, I know their families, and so that's kind of how we're trying to make sure that we're not missing anyone. So yeah, we know who those kids are. What about those students with limited access to internet, uh, as far as paper materials, and that's not reflected in those charts, is it? About the students who don't have so access. So if I don't have any internet access and I'm a student, you're going to see a zero for me on campus. But yet at the same time, I may have a paper about me of using that. But it's not measured on campus. Have we seen a lot of kids coming to collect paper materials? Yes. Okay. How do they turn those in?
So you have that in your packet as well. I believe all of y'all were copied on an email that went through. I'm explaining that. Y'all need more clarification on how that's going to work in the funding for this one-time stipend. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Okay. No, I was trying to follow along with your email, and I didn't understand the different distinction between what comes from the fast growth allotment versus what comes from revenue. Is what comes from the fast growth allotment use it or lose it? Okay. No. So, state funding is made up of many different things that they call fast growth allotment, early education allotment, regular ed allotment, GT allotment, all of those are in one pile, okay? So one of the things when I said additional revenue was from the ADA growth. In the state funding, there is something called fast growth allotment. It's just something that fast school districts get, fast growth school districts get. Um, it's not use it or lose it, you get it, but you cannot be fast growth next year and you don't get it. So you don't want to tie that money to something that's going to be recurring like a salary that will be recurring every year. So that is something that we did not purposely budget because we don't want to budget for any type of salary or anything and it be gone next year. Like we don't qualify for it. Now we're stuck trying to figure out how to make these salaries. So a lot of the surplus in the budget that we adopted was the fast growth allotment money. Okay? Um, that's for one-time expenses is what I would say. We do like next year think about doing some buses, some band instruments, that kind of that pot of money what's good for that or this one-time cycle because you don't tie that money up year over year in case it goes away. So it's all the same pot of money, it's just they give you fast growth allotment, early education allotment. So it's all really the same pot of money that comes from state money. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I have a question. So out of this pot of money, if we don't use it and we, we go with the $800 that we had already, where's that money going to go? To fund balance. Our fund balance, I think in the past, we have to reach a certain number to, to achieve the AAA rating. Do we have those number of months on hand right now? Well, there's not a um, defined fund balance policy for Duquesne ISD. It's basically between two and three months, and we have two and a half months. Actually, we're close to the three months. Um, if you do remember, we actually scored the highest on our first rating because it's up there now. Um, we added almost $6 million last year to fund balance. Um, adding a large sum of fund balance again this year, someone might say, well, they're, they have too much money. That's not the case. This money can go away at any time. Right. Um, and we felt like with what was going on and some of the other school districts around, you know, they've done this one-time thing. they come out through this year and they've increased theirs as well. Um, and we felt like with our employees, this would be something we could do to give back to them at this time. I think the, 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 it was scheduled for May 20th. Uh, for the other 400, we gave the 400 in November. We felt personally that it might be a better use of the money earlier rather than later for some of our employees who may have the spouse may have lost their jobs. That's why we moved it from May 20th to May 5th uh, to do that. We've always had the philosophy we would always maintain a healthy fund balance, but not at the expense of our employees. And uh, if we find something beneficial for employees, we feel like we'd rather go ahead and, and meet their needs as they need it and help healthy fund balance too. So uh, there's a certain fine line there and uh, based on our ratings and, and everything else from auditors, we feel like where our fund balance is, is really, really good at spot right now. And I agree, I think we do want to treat our employees right and I think we've done that by ensuring continuity, continuity of pay. But I think where my heartburn is, is that our community is struggling and I want to be respectful to the taxpayers and not look like we're making this decision without serious consideration because so many people, businesses are struggling. And so for us, the stewards of the taxpayers' dollars to come in with, was it an additional 3.5 or is that the total cost? The 2.7. 2.7 million. Is additional. I want them to know that we were thoughtful in how we distribute it. Yeah, we, this has been a process we've been working for a year since we started the process last spring. I did the stipend rather than Form of like Randy said, the overreaching idea is that since the stopping has a stop, yeah, it's absolutely. Be better we don't like use of our money. That, uh, that continue. At the same time, though, uh, we have to do something with the money. We can either let it sit, or we can help our employees who are suffering. We have a lot of employees who are making a minimum wage and having a spouse. We think that's good back to them as well. So putting our employees first is always a good thing, and I know the board feels the same way. Absolutely, but I, also but I don't think it's at the expense of the community that we're doing that. I think we're helping the community more than we're 
But I want to make, make sure that we're also attributing the funds necessary to the students because we need to work that out on a student by student basis. I came up with like $225 per student or something. And obviously we're not talking about writing checks to students, but I just want to make sure that we're using funds to have the best impact on our students. Well, and I don't think when we talked about it, the finance committee, Craig, you know, we, 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 uh, we looked at it pretty thoroughly and talked about it. I didn't hear any. I don't know if you discussed. Brandon, what is it? The amendment where was the $2,000 number come from? Sorry? Where, did you already know the finance committee that the $2,000 number was there? Where did we the get that 16, The $1,600. When we looked to see what we felt like we could, what we could afford, that is where we settled. It went from $1,000 to $2,000, and that's where we settled on when we looked at the finances and what we thought we could afford and still be able to put money in the fund balance. Is it really? Uh, when you see the amendment, when you see so where's the thousand coming from? Sixteen hundred. We're already committed to the eight hundred, and then they were talking about the thousand or uh, additional. Additional. Yes. So or they, they settled at sixteen or twelve hundred additional, which is right. sixteen hundred coming up. You know, and, and also, when you see the amendment, none of the money, is, the tax rate or the, the tax budget, none of that's amended for this. So it's not coming out of tax revenue. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk out there right now about because the values came out. Um, and when we get to our next budget workshop, you're going to see really that no matter what our growth is, if we have more growth, we're pushed down on the tax right now. So if you're at just say 9% out there, that's a dollar one now we have to go to. If we do have 14%, we have to go to 96 cents. So they're keeping us to where we cannot make any additional money on tax revenue with the values growing up. But you'll get more of that during the budget workshop. Chad, that's the question. Where is this money coming from? This money is coming from additional state funding from ADA, as well as the fast growth allotment, and about four hundred thousand is coming from interest revenue. So that's the one million four fifty is from that, and then the other part is from what we originally budgeted as a surplus in the budget that was the fast growth allotment that we did not budget. What dollar amount would it take us to get our fund balance to the full three months? Okay, no, no, it's okay. I mean, our budget is 159 million, so divide that by 12 times three. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Yeah, if that's a goal the board like to set, we're certainly open to that. But the board has never set that as a goal. But I think it's well, up in our past. Uh, and I will tell you that when we do bond ratings, it, it all set, because right now we tell them we don't have it, so it's not held against us. But if you want to set one and we don't need it, it's going to be held against us. So. But I, if, if the board wants to move that forward in the budget process or part of our goals to have three months worth of fund balance, we need to know that. But at the same time, like maybe you just said, it can hurt you in the long run. Right, right. If you don't make it, if you have a bad year, you don't need that. So it's always better to stay flexible, stay within what the state says that you should be in, receive a superior rating on it, and go about your business. But we can sure change that and look at that if you like to. No, I'm not suggesting that we implement a hard policy. I just think it's something we should talk about before we disperse $2.7 million. That's certainly something we all might be planning on. So uh, we adopted a surplus budget fast growth a lot because we did not adopt it into any expenditures so it's down at the bottom so those expenditures were not budgeted so expenditures being for the, the fast growth allotment revenue was not budgeted okay. okay so that's why you saw a big surplus at the bottom as well as being conservative on the state funding because like in the email we didn't know all of what was going to be required coming out of the new legislature and TEA didn't have all the answers so when we did our budget was very early so we were conservative. We were very conservative on the budget as well. So all of that money is not going to be spent on the bottom. We're still going to end the year with the surplus. So we'll still be adding to fund balance even though we're doing this. And we're going to have savings just naturally from school being closed from March 13th through the end of the year. Well then, uh, I would like the board to, to go back and revisit the idea of um, nailing down these campus uh, budgets so that we don't have little kids pocket candy and uh, uh, wrapping paper so that they can get something for their school. Because it appears to the taxpayer that, my God, we're taxed as high as we can tax. Why are these kids selling stuff to put things out of school? I know previously we had discussed um, the possibility of 
doing away with school supply lists and the district uh, providing the, that because we've had additional monies. Um, I would like to revisit that as opposed to a law, I mean, now it's too late, but as opposed to a large stipend like this, I would like to see it benefit the kids directly instead of the employees. That's it's just my thought. I don't know what everybody else thinks. But I'd rather see it benefit the kids. If that money is $225 per kid, that's an awful lot of school supplies. For Somebody can check kid. my time on that. And that's one thing, and I know not all of y'all are members of the finance committee, but we set budget priorities in the finance committee. And I, this year we went in with, with no given priorities, and they were created inside that committee. Um, and so that's something that the finance committee does come up with, is the budget priorities. Um, that can be something that you know that we look into if we need to have another finance committee meeting and change budget priorities. Um, it is kind of late in the game when the compensation is supposed to be May, um, but we can we can look into that if that's who serves. I mean, I know you mentioned Wendy. Wendy yeah. Gray. One of the one of the thoughts was the importance that we place on the staff retention and helping the staff feel like we supported them. I personally love the idea of giving the staff more money, especially right now. I know our teachers are working like crazy, long hours, really working, some of them are working harder than they did when they were in the classroom. And then our ancillary staff, I mean, they're some of the lowest paid, you know, and the money that we want to give them is very much going to benefit them, which goes directly into our community. Because most of the people, you know, your bus drivers and your custodians or whatever, they live in the community. Teachers may live outside of the community, but most of our, you know, the lower paid staff live here. So I think it's benefiting the community by boosting them a little bit. And it shows them that we're ready to come behind them. And I think that looks yeah, good as I a agree district. With that. That's what that $800 stipend is for. And so I feel, uh, I feel like I'm. Oh, it's just this, this is your one time. Yeah, this is right. And I mean, when this looks like this, when we're... Well, I think it's her response is, none of the school district employees have missed a paycheck. Right. So she's looking at, Beth is looking at it from a different angle because they're not going to miss a paycheck. You and I will miss a paycheck. I will miss a paycheck. So the question that she's referring to is, maybe next year when we have something like this, if it were to happen again, then maybe we can look at something as another way to help benefit kid-by-kid basis. And so I would not even be suggesting this if I felt like we weren't compensating our staff right. accordingly. And that's why I just wanted to have a conversation as stewards of the taxpayers, right? as trustees of the public's money. Right. I think, and I think all of you have been a huge advocate of getting rid of supply lists. Do that away with all fundraisers. I don't think there's any doubt that that's not something that we fully support those efforts. But it's, it is a it's a dynamic that changes on a yearly basis as far as how much is being raised, what's being done. There are a lot, there is a lot of money, there's a lot of supplies available for our students. Whether adults choose to use those resources that they have at hand is an adult decision. And we continue to work with our staff members and talking to our staffs that we really want to see the money go to the kids. The kids who don't have what they need, we supply those things. It's like turning a battleship. It takes a long time for people to get out of the habits of every year I'm going to have this fun with or every year we're going to have this supply list. So we've made great progress over the last 11 years, but we still aren't there. But we'll continue to emphasize the fact that if a kid needs something, we need to provide it for them and not put it on the back of the community to go out and get the bottles. So those expectation levels come from us as adults. So I can promise you that I'll continue to sing that same song for sure. I hear what you're saying. So I'm a huge advocate for that. We'll continue yeah. to do that. That's not lost in the mix. Sure. Well, one thing that Mr. Franklin said also is they used to fundraise for Pine Cove. The district pays 100% now of Pine Cove. There's no fundraising for, for Pine Cove. So we are listening and we are trying to pay for a lot of these expenses. I don't feel like fundraising would ever probably go away because you have clubs that go to Florida trips and things like that and you're going to have to fundraise for those. But as far as the entry level go, I think that's a you know possibility. With a 2.7 million dollar surplus, I would hope there'd be more than a possibility that we could look at 
putting money in campuses. And we, we talk each year, the finance committee, we talk about priorities. And when we set those priorities, uh, you know, we, we put them in order. And that's always, that's, capital outlay is always on the list. That's a capital outlay item. But uh, when you make priorities, you prioritize that, that process. But if that becomes the number, needs to be the number one priority, then that needs to be reflected to the finance committee committee and it needs to move up. But that's why we have the finance committee is to be able to do that. So if that's the feeling of the board, then the folks on the finance committee need to hear that. And as we go into that process next January and February, it's, it's done January, February, and March uh, when we get started then. So those priorities need to be discussed. Uh, teacher retention, teacher teacher pay, competitive teacher pay are always top uh, top priority for us making sure that our elementary school Staff where we can keep the 25 below the 23 upper class. Uh, those are three of the priorities for this year. Uh, we added safety. Uh, but with or without the additional 1200, are we not still the highest paying district in the state? We're not the highest. And they're all we're, we're in the top four top. We, we really want to be in the top 25%. Uh, we don't think we can go out and pay at the very top level of districts uh, in our area, but we do believe we should be on the top 25 percent, and that's where we really work to try to stay at the top 20, 25 percent of area Houston area school district. So that's been our goal in every area. Uh, that's administrative pay, teacher pay, uh, auxiliary pay, all of our pay. We've just shot for that goal rather than, rather than be in the bottom quartile where we were at one point. We really want to be in a quartile at the top. Core talk is just flexibility. Right. And it, it doesn't put the pressure on you to remain number one every every year. Now, you may be number one in some areas of those breakdowns, but saying that core talk is kind of an our goal. And so that's what we really work hard to do. And it changes every year. And this was the first year for the past year as well. And it's not something that we've received in the past. This was the first year, so it is new. So it's not something that we knew exactly how it was going to work. Um, so going forward, you know. When we get to the budget workshop in May, um, there are some large items that are requested that are just going to take up a lot of that bicycle for the lot. That's capital outlay stuff for next year. For next year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we want to maintain flexibility like Frank said. And that's what we said about a year ago. Yes. Yeah. So what, um, what Chad and I will tell you is that we're going to have Where did the two? Where did this uh, additional uh, twelve hundred dollar number come from? How did we arrive at that number? You said they threw out a thousand and they threw out two thousand. Well, we we started January trying to look at our crystal ball and figure where we think we're going to end the year at. Um, so Mr. Franklin comes and he talks to us and says, "How do we look? And what does funding look like?" You know, that's a regular um, conversation. So we start to look and we see how much money we have. Um, you see in the media other school districts doing something additional besides what they originally adopted in their compensation plan so that conversation starts to be had and, and it just evolves into how much money do you think we're going to have at the end of the year where do you think we're going to end and what's a good number where we can still add the fund balance and still come out um, and so like i said the number was started at a thousand dollars additional all the way up to what about fifteen hundred what about sixteen hundred you know so to see what we can actually afford and still be able to put money in the fund balance so it was just landed on 1600 to make it an even 2000 So if we, don't, if we just left it at the 800 that would have just going to sit there and go to fund balance. Yes. That's a very large amount. Yes. Yes. A lot of the area school districts are offering a very similar. Um, I know that. I haven't heard of the same. Yeah, I know. I um, no. Some of the others are. And I know because my husband works for a different school district. And we he got a surprise one at Christmas. Another one. And so I, know a lot of people. I spoke to, I was on all the campuses this spring, <clears throat> speaking to the faculties, and the faculties included aides, custodians, all the way through. And I asked them about how was your feeling back in November 20th? Uh, what did you think of that? And they were, well, they were so excited they, that they, they got that money yeah. right before Christmas. And, uh, and I said, y'all done a great job all year. Uh, our board has been supportive in y'all tightening your belts and 
working uh, smart as well as uh, you know effectively. And uh, you know I think that we'll, we may be able to do something better than we did in the fall. And I told everybody that in the spring, based on the fact that uh, you know you guys are doing a great job of doing things that we need you to do. And uh, you know faces of employees lit up. Of course, when they heard that, I didn't give it a mouth because I didn't know it. But I did feel like a brand new company had numerous conversations that it was going to be more than $400. And we began having those conversations with you guys about it being more than that. We didn't nail that down until pretty recently, uh, since COVID really hit. Uh, it was, we were talking about the numbers, but since our last meetings when we really nailed down the exact amount, that's why it's for you now, rather than last month, the exact amount. We, we did mention it, we continue to mention it, it's going to be more. We were going to try to, to try to be as efficient as we can and maintain what we need to for our front balance. But yet at the same time, <clears throat> say thank you to our employees you know, in a way that is very meaningful. As you look at our employees, and, and like I said, um, $2,000 is a significant amount of money compared to $800. And so uh, that's that's what we're, I continue to we continue to have discussions. Where are we with it? Where where, where does it look like we're going? Where we you know, is it this amount? Is it this amount? Is it this amount? I've always been an advocate, and I know y'all have too, to uh, support our employees, and uh, that's why we do what we do. That's why we moved it from May 20th to May 5th. That's why we, it could have been a lot easier to set that and give them another $400 and pay. put that money in the fund balance. That's the easy way. And I've never liked doing things the easy way. I always like to do it the most beneficial way that they did. Popular or not. Respectfully, I don't think it's easy to say as a board member that we have these questions, but I feel like it's a difficult thing to do as representatives of the community. So I would just disagree that it's easy to give the 400, you know. Like, well, I think it's easier to give the 400 to sit here and have this discussion tonight. I promise you that. You know, because we, we sat there with $800 last year budget and went through the process. Well, so, not for chance, that would have been easy. Yeah, and as a board member, it would be easier to sit here and say, let's go for it. But I feel like we have a responsibility to ask questions. That's no, no doubt. The questions are good questions. Uh, they're, they're questions that need to be answered. But as far as making it simpler for Brandy doing what she's doing, I, we didn't need to say anything. Let her write a $400 check. Even though I made 20 That would have been easier to have those discussions. But we, we've worked really, really hard. As to where that is and what's, what's going on, the easier part would be just to do a hundred dollars and fall out of business. But sometimes it's, it's good to do things that are maybe a little more difficult because it certainly has been more difficult on Brady and her for sure. Not speaking of the board, but speaking of the term. Chad wants me to be quiet. So. And I just want to point something else out too. On the amendment, you're going to see. Uh, Child nutrition amendment of 195,600. That is the 1,200 additional dollars that wasn't budgeted originally in child nutrition that will transfer from operating to child nutrition to cover that portion since they are still funded. Thank you. Any more questions? So I, I do want to just say uh, the questions that I had are not because I don't want to give our Absolutely. employees the money. Absolutely not. My concern is I have to be able to reconcile in my mind. Uh, and I think that the fact that we got it last week, I know you've been working on it, talking about it. I don't, I, I remember vividly 400 and 400. I remember that very well. I'm so happy about that. And I'm happy that we're in a position to give an additional $1,200 because that's life changing. I'm going to miss about four or five paychecks here pretty quick. But so I know how important that is. But uh, I think that at this time, it was on there and it was, uh, we were just, I, I wanted to know where, where are we getting that money? How did we come up with this extra way to do this? Is this taking away from our adding to the fund balance? Those are the concerns that I had because I want to be able to explain to the voters, especially this fall, why I voted for something that uh, wasn't, a we amended the budget at the worst time in our economic history to include more money for our employees. So I just wanted to be able to explain to someone this money was given to us and rather than just take a bit, put it in our bank account, make our pocket fatter, we decided to take a piece of the money that we've earned 
and give it to the employees because it's much needed. That's all I wanted to know. That's, that's how I'm going to explain it. Yes. That's exactly it. That's, how, that's the best way I can explain it. But you've answered my questions, and they were, where did this money come from? And what does it mean to other things? Because I, I, I get a lot of feedback, and I know everybody else does too, about stupid fundraisers. I bought a lot of candy that is just disgusting, and wrapping paper that you can't even cut. So it's frustrating to me as a, a some of it's from your kid, I'm sure. So it's just frustrating to have to fund something like that when we have this chunk of money. I'd like to see, I know kids have talked about it a long time, get rid of the school supply list. Right. It's ridiculous. I'd love to do that. And this may be the catalyst to do it because I'm going to let you all know I'm volunteering to serve on the budget and the finance committee. I would love to do that if I could get reelected. Well, I just want to also tell you that once money goes into fund balance, the only way to get it out is to adopt a budget shortfall. So you have to adopt that your expenditures are greater than your revenue, and that's going to look bad. So the only way to get it back out is to adopt a shortfall in your budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been on a board in my beginning of my school board career that did just that. They right. adopted uh, negative budgets and expenditures. No, because I echo that. We certainly want to do the right thing for our staff. I just felt like during this really difficult time, we need to be extra sensitive to spending money. Thank you. Okay. Um, another thing, just on the finance, um, the premium pay, that will, the first paycheck will also be on May 5th for the people that did receive premium pay. That's some of the hourly people that were on the front lines that actually came in and worked during those times. They get premium pay, okay. did you say? Yes, just like they've done it in the past with any type of disaster, any of our hourly people that are actually working and doing something, yes, they will get a premium paycheck on the 5th. Which is uh, time and a half for any hour they actually work. Okay. I've been asked that question before too. I said, oh, I'm sure you will. Okay. Anything else on that one? If not, we'll go on to the fee. Okay. Um, we have been approved through um, USDA to feed through May 22nd. Um, Debbie is going to be on the phone call again on Wednesday. She said the last phone call they had, they did mention that with school being closed, that we might be required to feed through the entire summer. Um, that hasn't been actually official yet, but that is something that might be coming down that we need to feed in June and July as well. But currently we are approved to feed through May 22nd. Um, we are going to ask that we revisit the feeding schedule so that they could feed Monday through Thursday and on Thursday they would give out the Friday meals. So they would get four meals on Thursday and then the employees would take off on Friday. She has the same number, the same employees that are volunteering that are working every week. Um, so that will continue but we are thinking about revisiting that schedule so that they can just work Monday through Thursday and then be off on Friday but the citizens would not miss any of the, or the children would not miss any meals because they would give them out on Thursday. Um, she has had some issues meeting the bill pattern, so she's had to apply for waivers because some of the um, suppliers are out. Um, but they said they're going to approve any waiver that comes through because of the shortages of things. Um, this week, we, or last week, for spring break, we spent 6190 It was down from the previous week. That was 6322 But she said today they fed a lot more than what they fed last week, so the numbers are back up. We're talking about implementation of that May. May 4th was the original. Two weeks out. So we give With communication. two weeks notice that in two weeks we're going to stop Friday feeling feeding and we'll give you an extra meal on Thursday. So that gives everybody a little bit of time. And the food bank is there on Thursdays as well, so they're giving them enough food for the weekend too. So the food banks are out there on Thursdays. Randy, can start with the top half. Uh, they get that win. I'm sorry, I missed the day. The premium? The bank and pay that's from work prior that they had already that they had already done. Yes, it, the um, cutoff for May fifth is that was actually last Friday was right. the eighteenth. So they'll get so a anything that they worked from the March thirteenth through the eighteenth, they'll get that premium. And pay. that'll continue on until the, the crisis is over. How does that work? That has not been um, actually decided yet because um, we didn't know that we were going to close at the end of the school year. So we're going to have to look at that because it does have a financial impact. So we're going to have to look at that. I'll probably talk about it in cabinet and see if we think, you know, because if things go back to normal and people can go back to work, um, but school's closed, we'll just have to see how it's going to. Yeah, okay. My question to that is so, what do they consider? Why is that considered a mishap? It's just supposed to stay at home. Well, because well, you have to use the they're essential employees. Okay. okay. 
So that it should I mean, there's, the, we're talking about guys on grass. No, the best, the best way I can explain it um, is just say, for instance, you have 15, 20 child nutrition people that are coming to work every single day, and you have 100 people that are sitting at home that do the same job. They're both getting the same amount of pay, but these people are actually coming and doing some work for New Kenya ISD. So that's why it's premium pay. I don't know that you would necessarily say hazard pay, but the people that are actually physically coming up here and doing something for us they're getting more than what the person sitting at home that makes the same no, dollar. I say that, but my question is that everybody that's showing up, so our, our landscape guys that are mowing grass and everybody else that are hourly, are they getting? Any hourly employee that is coming, because we don't have every landscape person coming to work. Some of them are sitting at home drawing a paycheck, and some of them are actually coming in and working. It's a skill. It's a skill. This, I mean, I understand paying the people there, having to deal with everybody, giving them time and a half. I don't understand paying the maintenance guys or, you know, that one kind of iffy to me. Because I'm still working. I'm considered essential. My business is considered essential. We're doing construction every day, but I'm not paying my guys time and a half. So that's just questionable to me. That, I guess it's a differentiation of, I mean, it gets two people that are both maintenance people. One of them is sitting at home getting a paycheck. This one is actually working and they would getting the same exact paycheck if you didn't do something a little extra for the person that's actually working and not sitting at home. You're watching TV. Because we have a skeleton group so we're a stay at home community. What is their stay at home order? And so all of our employees who aren't, we think it's essential to be there. <coughs> Are we Unless rotating we people's 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 people's
we don't want to handicap ourselves in the process of reimbursement by not following what's the established guidelines for those grants. We've learned that over the years of hard work through hurricanes, floods, and other things. Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Castleberry. Uh, just a real quick briefing on the uh, end of the year things that we're working on through student services right now. Uh, yearbooks right now, we work with the campuses and work with the company about the delivery date. Uh, Mr. Carroll provided us a room in his warehouse, so they're going to deliver there. Part of the problem with that is some of those companies were not essential, so they didn't work right now. So we're not sure that our delivery dates of May the 12th, May the 15th on most of the elementaries is going to be a true date. So we're working through that, but we'll, when they're delivered and we are able to go back to the campus, then we'll get a plan together on how we're getting those out to the, to the parents. Uh, working with the high school principals about honors recognition, how they're going to work through that with their honors graduates and things. Uh, still putting a plan together with the three high school principals for that. Uh, of course, as you know, prom was canceled. And then uh, those same companies, Balfour, with the yearbooks, also have our caps and gowns. The last, what I heard from the three principals is that Balfour is going to mail the caps and gowns to the seniors, so they'll get those. The invitations they're going to hang on to until it's figured out how graduation will work out, and then they'll send those out to the seniors by mail also. Uh, and it's subject to change since they're not essential and don't have the manpower to do what they're talking about right now. But that's the plan right now. Uh, also, with Graduation, Dr. Powers, Dr. Weatherly, and myself got together, started putting together a virtual graduation plan with uh, Dr. Powers as a team and then the principals and how that will look. Uh, should we have to go to that? It's uh, just something to put in our back pocket for later on if that's what the route we have to go. But there's also discussions on if we had to do something here at the stadium or the Campbell Center is not canceled yet, but I would say they're 99% canceled right now. But um, that's just a quick update of things. Any questions? Thank you very much. Mostly this, <laughs> most of you know this. The commissioner is, after the governor's conference last Friday, press conference, the commissioner is supposed to be presenting us some ideas on graduation for graduations across the state of Texas. So we're anxiously awaiting to hear what the commissioner's report will say as far as how to handle graduations and whether that will be a subject that's dealt with from the state level that's being sent down to the districts, or whether we'll still have our own uh, free will on how we do graduations. So we're, we'll hopefully by the end of this week know more about graduations. But at this point, uh, Dr. Powers will continue to get the information out to our folks that we are working on those issues, and as soon as we have some answers, we'll, we'll make sure and share it. Uh, I'll also share with you guys before we put anything out as far as anything that. One of the things we would then begin to evaluate different areas for graduation, we would probably include our own stadium if there's not another area available or another spot available. Uh, Campbell Center has not indicated uh, yet whether they're going to cancel or not. Uh, we would certainly look at all our options at that point. But this would definitely be an option. Mr. Sipe did his calculations on if everyone sat six feet apart, about a thousand. No, how many can we hold if we're not sitting that far? Oh, 85, 85, 85 is the capacity of the state. That's what that's like. Yeah, 85. It's a little more than the campus. No, something. Yeah. Any, any questions? We we'll continue to work on them. Mr. Freeman. If that six foot thing is lifted and we're allowed to gather, is it going to be back?
back up to the Cape Division to make that decision if we allow them to hold the banquet? Actually, I think that would go through with our incident command group with Mr. Calvert and Chief and Mr. Batchelder. They're the ones that are putting those plans in action about how we can do that. But as long as you have that six-foot right. rule, even if you use the stadium for graduation, as right. Brent said, you're knocking it down to very few people because you're having to set it apart. If you watch the uh, Air Force graduation this weekend, they did that. Yeah. And it was different to watch. So yeah. We're working on different plans for that. Okay. Yes. You. Not canceled, but not. And definitely postponed. Definitely postponed. Yes. Nice work. Thank you very much. Sorry, Steve, you got, you got the floor. A lot going on there. So, uh, from our standpoint, certainly hiring is uh, critical. <coughs> and, uh, you know, we're using uh, our application process. Principals are looking at that on a regular basis. Of course, other directors as uh, need be for the positions that we have available. Uh, Ms. Pearson is communicating regularly uh, by email and calls. Uh, so a lot of that's going well. One, one area I've mentioned before but, uh, we use is a, uh, a recording interview uh, process uh, where uh, applicants can record themselves on the phone and that's put into the program that we're using. So it gives the principal's ability to look at uh, this person and as they are answering some questions, they are, are prepared for questions. And so uh, <clears throat> that's been very helpful. And uh, we'll continue to use that um, since our job fair, which was uh, scheduled for this next weekend, will not happen in, in this facility. Uh, we are looking at a virtual job fair Pearson has gone to a virtual job fair from Texas teachers. Uh, I just put that on the little girl during our spring break. She went to that and with this company that we're looking at using for the job, the virtual job fair. I was very impressed. And she got to sit the side of uh, a recruiter uh, involved in that. And it's uh, I use a lot of chat rooms uh, ability, but then they also have a a way in which you can do something live with uh, the person who's uh, interviewing. So I think that's going to be a good option uh, as we move forward in May. And so we're, we'll look at that as well. Uh, a lot of campuses, or a lot of districts are looking at different uh, virtual ways to do it, of course. Uh, and so uh, I think that's going to help us a whole lot as uh, we're filling our positions. Uh, campus and then other positions that we have uh, as we go uh, through the spring. The other uh, item I want to talk about is uh, our appraisals for our staff, our employees. Uh, TEA has allowed us to have some flexibility uh, because of the way that we're ending our year. And for our teachers, um, we always have like the very end of what we used to call a summative conference now, so the end of year conference where uh, you know, the principal will uh, put all the observations and things together and come up with a teacher rating. Uh, that never did get started uh, for the end of the year. That's usually in April uh, through early May process. So that's one area that the TEA is allowing districts to decide whether to move forward with that part of the T test. And so we'll, uh, Shoffner and uh, our directors have talked to the principals about that, so we will probably adjust that piece. Um, and but we still have recorded for the teacher record uh, their observations, and uh, we will have those those uh, pieces that we can move forward to next year. So we do want to have a record, of course, of what teachers are doing in the classroom by by observations. So um, you know that's one area that we'll. Be adjusted. And then for our other employees, uh, you know, we have most of our appraisals on uh, evaluations on the Ways of Fish uh, platform, and uh, we should move forward with those. Um, uh, the area that's changing would be uh, those teachers that you, know, you have to go in and do an observation, and uh, uh, that summary at the end of the year is pretty involved, and I think that's the area that most districts are. Uh, just saying, hey, uh, 
uh, you know, to try to do that through Zoom or through phone calls and calling all of them and having conferences that way, uh, there's better use of our time uh, to end that part of it. So, uh, you know, that's a, uh, an adjustment that uh, districts are making, uh, but still uh, have the right kind of uh, record for teachers as we finish the year. Those are the two areas uh, that we're uh, working in uh, on a regular basis to be as effective as we can as we finish the year. Any questions? Spring, to say the least. Uh, I've been doing this almost 30 years. Never in my wildest imagination that you have ever made me believe that we shut down athletics in the state of Texas uh, in the spring, anytime, but in the spring especially, uh, because there's so much going on. But it is what it is. Uh, shortly after the uh, governor made his announcement on Friday, the UIL, as I'm sure you're all aware, uh, ceased athletics for the remainder of the spring. Uh, they told us we could continue to meet uh, via Zoom or no face-to-face -face meetings with the kids for the remainder of the school year, and so we're going to continue doing what we're doing. Uh, coaches have done a phenomenal job of reaching out to those kids. We've had a very high, I'm going to say this is for Christy, we've had really, really high uh, attendance rates, and uh, so our kids have responded well, we've done a good job teaching character stuff, working on that, uh, doing what we can do in an analytic fashion. So, uh, and, and is it perfect? No. Would you like to be out on the field? Yes. but. Obviously, we've got more questions than we get answers moving forward. Uh, typically, if we're wrapping up in May, we already have a plan for the summer with summer strength and conditioning, with uh, all our summer camps and everything. And then that segues right into the 1st of August with uh, football, volleyball, cross country starting. And we do not have any definitive direction from UIL about when we'll be able to start back uh, with athletics. That, that immediately raises several concerns for me. Uh, one, we're going to get Christmas for these kids. Uh, and right now, uh, we with the folks in the Royal Hermel on a weekly week basis, and uh, we don't know when we're going to be able to get that set up. Uh, I did get an email from the UIL, uh, or uh, via the Athletic Directors Association here in the region. Uh, the UIL is considered modifying some of the physicals for next year for kids coming in. Uh, you still have to check the medical history boxes as long as you didn't have any uh, red flags in the medical history related to heart or those type of questions or those type of things. Then and you had a clear physical this year, that clear physical would translate into next year. So uh, they're looking at that. Obviously they're you know for a pro those are gone or for gone or pro. But, uh, we're looking at that uh, you know these kids haven't done anything now going on five weeks, six weeks to count spring break. Uh, you know we had a staff meeting this morning Coach Reed, which Holly and I are obviously very concerned about where these kids are from a conditioning standpoint. Good news is I'm seeing more kids out in my neighborhood than I've seen in the last seven and a half, eight years, uh, which is great. But there's a lot of difference in kids running around and playing in the neighborhood and them actively participating in a rigorous strength and conditioning uh, or practice program. And so you know, that's going to take some time to build that back. You just don't uh, you don't go from uh, zero to 100 overnight. And so uh, we're already having some conversations as, as well as UIL. They've got those concerns as well. You know, you don't do anything with these kids, and then all of a sudden, August 1st, you say, okay, go take off. Uh, you know, it just doesn't work that way. And so uh, they're looking at some options and alternatives uh, as to how to best to address that to prepare those kids. Uh, it's just like with start school. Uh, you know, you have the, the four or five days that you transition and acclimatize. And so that four or five days is going to turn into eight or nine weeks, uh, in my best estimation. Uh, it's going to take about two months to get those kids from where we are now to where they need to be to compete uh, at a high level. And so uh, can I tell you how that looks? No, I can't. I can tell you that we all have those concerns uh, at our level here up through the, the regional athletic directors there, uh, association as well as UIL. So, again, I just can't tell you what that looks like, but it's it's something that's being thought through and being working through. So, uh, we're going to finish this year strong. We're going to do what we can during the summer uh, and then uh, transition uh, into fall sports as we are allowed and as most plans can set forward. Uh, I want to 
another note, uh, we're going to have sure tryouts via virtual Zoom, which is going to be uh, new. Talked to the cheerleader sponsors a couple of times, uh, and we talked about just tabling it and having those face to face in the summer. The problem is getting everything ordered, getting those kids ready to start, uh, and it's just the lead time that runs up to them. So uh, they've been working with Varsity, which is the cheer association. Uh, they've got a, a template for an online tryout. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to be in the morning to talk about that. Uh, what I told them was I wanted it to be fair and consistent and objective. Uh, and so uh, is that going to look like it did this time last year? No, it won't. Uh, but it will be uh, as fair as we can make it objective, very objective uh, and very consistent. So uh, I think that's the best we can do at this point. But we need to get that behind us so that we can get the uniforms ordered, so that we can get the stuff done, so that we can prepare for more work that as well. Got any questions for me? Thank you. The best part about going to the end is a lot of questions have been asked by the people. So, uh, where is Austin Dory? I just want to tell you, Operation Lab 7 Congress, I'm about to get so. We have some questions. Where are we at? Let's go here. I just want to give you some numbers so that uh, people can never ask you. Technology department since the start of out with Christie and our department to help kids get Chromebooks. And as of this morning, Ben is at 12,000 Chromebooks that are checked out of students in our district. 2,000 laptops and Chromebooks to uh, teachers or staff. So we're almost 14,000 devices in this district. And Ben said basically, if I can talk about the park environment, there's 11 facilities right now seven elementaries, two middle schools, two high schools that have Wi Fi capabilities. Uh, when I make trips around the district, checking things out, there's always people in those slides using them. It's a great convention being came up with that. I thought it was a good thing. But the number that I really want you to hear is what these guys are doing on the help desk. There's problems. A normal month is about 250 help desks over 20 facilities. Last month, we did 971 help tickets. 271 phone calls. That's 1,200 different kids that had to get help. Our parents are helping their kids. You can't, you can't do the work. Your, your Chrome book didn't work. You can't get into it. So Ben's guy has been going hours a day since March 13th to get these help test tickets. So when spring break came, we were going to slow down instruction. His guys get more, Chrissy's people too, but Ben's guys get great too. Just from the pure fact that the numbers are going through. Um, the state group we talked about is uh, the, the grounds crew that y'all were talking about. Basically what we do is there's a 24 hour swing. We have 10 to 15 guys that we swing through. God willing it rains, we don't we don't work that day. So it's not a four to five day a week job. We average two to three days a week. We took spring break off because of the plan was off calendar. And, and uh, the biggest issues we do is uh, Sawyer's meal, New King Hill, where we feed. We don't want to be two foot tall when parents are coming in to get their food. We have all the administration in the hub because that's where we're doing all of our central stuff in office. We hit those other campuses about every 15th day, every 16th day. We, uh, we missed Brooklyn last week. I'm sorry, Mr. Brooklyn, but we got it. It's had a hand in so uh, it's a grand screw. Um, those guys are out there, and it's, it's difficult. It's like, as far as being on the front line as a first responder, no. But it's amazing what they can get done, and a lot of time they can take care of it. The maintenance guys, right now, everybody's at the house, and this is an emergency. We have HVAC go out, even though we're not in the buildings. We get alarms, they gotta come up here and take care of that, so we try to limit it to just emergency. Um, warehouse, we're about our 1500 delivery the last month. We've sent all the deliveries from every facility to the central office, central warehouse. I have probably 25 pallets in there for every department or campus starting to fill up. Athletics is leading the world in deliveries. And so uh, that's one of Custodial, we have a very, when I say skeleton, I have 143 custodians, I'm using four. And we're, we're, we're hitting the admin buildings, technology, the police station, the ones that are running you know, every day. And we're trying to do that. Those four ladies, we try to rotate them through, but a lot of times they get, because of security things, we don't let anybody that's going to the building section. So we try to use the same four because they have high for campus audience. They've been trained on things and information and things that came to us. So we do that. But as far as operations, we're, we're ready to go. They're doing a good job. And like I said, if you, if you need to talk about what people can make, technology and instruction are running us right now. And whatever they need, we're going to take care of. And that's what we're doing. Any questions on operational stuff? Yeah. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. So school buses, uh, gas, diesel, I know not always one degree isn't, but 
need to be started? Sure. Things like that. You still have. Yeah. We brought in. We we, we solved with the with the director, Mr. Director, Mr. Director, Mr. Director, Mr. Director, Mr. Director, myself, and Billy got together. We stalled as long as we could bring them in, and then we brought them in uh, two weeks ago. We basically topped off all fuel, all fluids, cranked them up, moved them in the parking lot, then reparked them, checked them, checked tires. And they said every four to five weeks that we did that would be okay, and more than that, they'd be worried about it. So we're doing it in the middle of May to hit it again. So it just depends on what we do with our, the, with the governor and us about the back there. We brought the mechanics in, but it wasn't just drivers, it was mechanics. Yeah, I'm just curious, I mean, I know that we've got much less fuel um, on the prices. It was lucky we lowered. Our fuel purchase was about two weeks before the season. So the tanks that are all full were probably 100% of the diesel because we're always using diesel right now. We're probably 90% on the limit because we're not using all of our white fuel. So we're, we're good. Really thought if we continued this way, we'd be good to probably the first of July or middle of you know, July before we had to make another order for the unleaded. We're going to guess. I wondered how things were going out at the they actually, actually, Mr. Shirley and I went out there. There's a lot less animals than when we started things that going on. Uh, we uh, installed multiple washing stations and uh, hand sanitizers on the walls for the to through. He said that his initial number, well, I don't want to quote Mr. Shirley, but I know that the high number he had back in the middle of March, it's probably 25% of that now. It's a lot of the pigs have gone away, he said, people were selling them. There's still some steers out there that I saw, but we're going through and uh, the, the gentleman that works out there, yeah, his name Jake. Yeah, yeah. 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 is going through and checking on the kids and parents and talking to them, and so was the teachers. Yeah. Mr. Sherman, when we met last uh, week before spring break, you had no issues with that. But did you, you, have, have, you have, have you had a chance to talk to Warren about the new upcoming things that hit in six weeks? He is a brother. He did say there was a deadline coming up, but we haven't had a meeting about it. He was going to actually get with some of Christie's people, and they were going to meet with us first. But I wanted to say, about Josh, you guys, I mean, teachers sometimes can be complicated. Can make them happy sometimes. I've had more teachers call and tell you that they appreciate the support that you guys have done to do whatever it takes to get them what they need. And uh, so, you know, you guys have done a wonderful job over there keep, keeping us rolling. Curveball that got thrown at you. You guys sure have caught it and done the best you can. And so we appreciate you guys. And please let those guys know from us that we appreciate them in the trenches every day. Doing what's best for our kids. Yeah, I know that's not your not Josh. I do that. <laughs> I look around at you. <laughs> okay, communication update. Um, I feel sorry for that. That was a bad target. Try to Uh, at the last board meeting, we talked to revisit a couple of things we talked about. We were about to release the superintendent video and do our first superintendent update at that time. Uh, we've done five of those in the last several weeks, uh, and we're chronicling those on the website so people can go back and see those. So all five of them are posted. We're going to have another one by the end of this week. Um, I talked about uh, developing an FAQ. We did that and published that uh, uh, the last couple of weeks. That's on the front of the website. All the information that's in that FAQ is also posted someplace else, but it is a convenient way for people to go in and kind of browse through a number of issues in one place. It's also fully translated. There's actually two links that are we're keeping that going. It's a work in progress. We add information, we take stuff away. Uh, we've organized the front of the website to really kind of be a reflection of what we're doing right now. If you go to the left side, there's quick links. We've added, aggregated and added, added a ton of resources, uh, whether it's Chromebook information, Wi-Fi access, uh, free internet or discount internet options that companies are offering, uh, counseling and mental health supports, homeless student resources are there, health services information is there as well, especially stuff related to the coronavirus, which is really where we started in February. Um, between April 1 and April 15, we participated in the state's Apart We Stand Together campaigns where every day we were sharing information with the public on social media and through emails and things like that uh, related to the fight uh, or the social distancing and, and the measures that the state was taking. Uh, a couple of special projects, Mr. Castleberry referred to one we're working on in communications, a virtual graduation idea, so we need three of them, and it's in its infancy right now, but we're going to move forward so that we have something for sure. We're going to work with each campus on, on what that would look like. Um, we also want to continue something we started five years ago, which we call Lasting Impressions. It's a really popular video series that we do around teacher appreciation time. 
and I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we have reached out to the campuses and gotten some positive response. We're going to have some version of that hopefully over the next several several weeks. Uh, hopefully it coincides with teacher appreciation. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know exactly four or five weeks ago what this is going to look like in terms of covering the school district. Typically what we do is we're out there in schools, we're shooting video, we're taking pictures, and you know, it's all face-to-face -face stuff. So uh, I've been pleasantly surprised that we've been able to aggregate and share and, and even kind of rebrand a lot of information on social media. We had a really robust month in March, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest of the year on social media. Um, typically we produce 12 to 15 videos a month. We've posted 50 plus over the last six weeks just by taking what teachers are doing at home, sharing, rebranding it. We've added several new playlists on the YouTube channel, so you can go there and see story time at NCISD. There's a math playlist now. I think there's an art and cooking playlist, and there'll be more as this continues over the next four or five weeks. Um, we were also working at the time, I think, uh, at least in terms of an idea, on several videos. We produced a Chromebook distribution video, put that out. One of our updates, we did a food distribution video. We are also working on a facilities and schools cleaning video, sort of working progress, not ready uh, to be disseminated yet. So, any questions? Okay. Thank you. Item five on the agenda is reports and proposals for board members. Item six on the agenda is consideration, consent calendar, consideration, minute, consideration of financial report, consideration of purchase and report. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Um, is, so we're going to get, let me do it like this. So is there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve these items on the consent calendar with the personnel section being excluded? Section D being excluded. Is there a motion? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. aye. The, the opposed is no. The motion is approved. Uh, we're now going to vote on the personal section of the consent calendar. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the items on the personnel section D? There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. The opposed no. The motion is approved. Item seven on the agenda is in consideration of the approval of application for the school closure waiver, March 16, 2020 through March 20, 2020, for closure preparing by Mr. Casperi. Yes, sir. On March 16th through the 20th of 2020, we're closed preparing for remote instruction due to COVID-19. We're asking for you to approve the application for the school waiver tonight. Are there any other questions or further discussions? Is there a motion to approve the application for the school closure waiver for March 16th, 2020 through March 20th, 2020 for closure, closed pre preparing? That motion has been moved and seconded. There will be no further discussion of what will be taken. All those in favor say aye. The opposed is no. Item eight on the agenda is consideration of approval for application for low attendance waiver March 13, 2020, for Duquesne ISD, presented by Mr. Casper. Yes, sir. On March 13th, uh, attendance percentage for Duquesne ISD dropped below 10% of the district uh, average from the previous school year. So we're asking tonight for you to approve a waiver for us to ask for their, uh, that day in attendance. Are there any other questions for further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the application for low attendance waiver on March 13, 2020, to Katie Heisney? Motion has been moved and seconded. There will be no further discussion. The vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is no. The motion is approved. Item 9, the agenda is consideration to take possible action in a matter of New Caney versus, I mean, student versus New Caney Independent School District docket number 158-SE-0120. Is there 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the terms of the settlement between the parties in this matter, student versus Lucanian in the school district docket 158-SE-0120? I move that the board approve the terms of the settlement between the parties to the matter style student versus New Caney Independent School District docket number 158-SE-0120 before a special education hearing officer from the state of Texas. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. There being no further discussion, a vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no motion is approved. Item 10 on the agenda has been withdrawn and no action is needed. Item 11 on the agenda is the adoption of the resolution authorizing the administration to approve and execute a certain easement dedication to the plat concerning district real property. Mr. Calvert. Hey, yes, sir. This is a resolution. Basically, what it's saying is, is that Mr. Franklin and myself have the authority to execute the easements as we're requiring them for you know, keep across the project. You now, all those water line easements, high school easement for the road potentially. Uh, basically, it's giving us the authority to go ahead and sign off on those to keep those projects rolling on instead of bringing them to you. Mr. Grant did have something similar to that, so we're just now catching up on his time. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to approve the resolution authorizing administration to approve execute certain easement dedication or plats concerning district real property? Motion has been moved and seconded. There will be no further discussion. The vote will be taken. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The the motion is approved. Item 12 on the agenda is to consider second resolution of delegation of emergency or associated powers to the superintendent and for designees for purpose or of crisis or emergency management to respond to COVID-19. Mr. Calvert. Yes, yeah, sir. This is an update to the resolution that we brought y'all last month that Mr. Nichols uh, crafted for us during this time. Uh, basically, the main things that you're going to see different are uh, a couple of things uh, regarding some personnel things that Mr. Breen has already talked about, evaluations, things like that. Also, one thing that we felt that would be uh, prudent for us to ask for at this time was normally after the May board meeting, Mr. Franklin can start hiring and we'll report back to y'all who that is. Considering the situation we're in right now, we wanted to go ahead and start that after this board meeting, pending y'all's approval tonight. Uh, so he's added a few of those things in there, as well as some additional delegations uh, that have come down through the state, recommendations, things of that nature. So that's the the resolution.